Welcome back everyone, my name is Dr. Eva. this is some more Stellaris playing the Star Trek New Horizons mod. And this is Earth. Um, we're finally building another colony ship now that we've dealt with the Zindi threat. And I kind of need things. I need resources mostly. So expansion is actually probably the easiest way to do this. Um, we're still exploring the galaxy. I have no idea what the next type of events will entail um i do know that we want to form the federation but we do need some time before we actually get to that point and we might actually need the research for that as well um let's do the commercial transporters it's just that little bit safe oh they left they left for a different planet bastards um why are you so unhappy? Faction happiness, Zeno rights. Oh, we have a passive study, okay. Um, that means we need to go to policies and edicts. Native, definitely passive, that fits with us anyway. Tamarian unity, we could learn much from each other. Let's turn that to passive, which actually gets them up to 58%. No purchase, multicultural, so we need a few more species. That will instantly happen if we form the Federation anyway. That is a very sizable planet that I would like to survey soon. Um, preparing for ship upgrades, warping to Sol. If you just stop, go warp, and then you are coming to survey the system over here. Oh, they've closed their borders, so it's xenophobic Complete. isolationists, the Tamarians. Okay, that makes sense, to be fair. Um, I can build things here now. Actually, that mining station looks really tempting to build, so I will do so. And the thing is, I cannot really remove the Dilithium refinery yet, because it's kind of important for us to have it. Um, we could upgrade the main building, but we still don't have that much mineral income, sadly. That needs to be addressed. Um, but do I take this planet? I think I should just take Ceres over there, and then later on go for different planets. Probably feels the best to do it that way. I'm still peeved that I cannot merge my fleets. After a day in orbit of Barnard Star A, with no progress in locating the source of the unusual subspace ratings, Captain John Su prepares to give the order to move on to the USS Franklin's next survey target. Moments later, the ship's sensors detect a surge in subspace activity, followed by the appearance of an alien ship off the port bow. Hailing the vessel proves fruitless, and after several minutes of silent confrontation, the ship warps away. Leave orbit, we don't want a confrontation. The USS Franklin leaves orbit several light minutes away from Barnard Star A. Ship sensor detect another surge in subspace activity on the opposite side of Barnard Star A. Arriving at the coordinates of the vessel is nowhere to be seen, however the subspace disturbance has at its heart an exotic particle fountain, rapidly decaying in intensity. Captain John Su commits the USS Franklin to the study of the particle fountain before it collapses. Oh, some free uh, physics research. Actually quite useful. And I should have muted my phone. As always. Happens quite often, doesn't it? So 2783 hull points towards 3079. And yeah, the weaponry on the Enterprise is just a little bit stronger. I just feel like at some point we'll have to just get rid of the Enterprise. Force fields? Oh, that's just straight up armor. Let's get the inertial electrostatic confinement. Oh, an abandoned amusement park. That's actually ooh, a lot of research. It's actually a um, vanilla event. Oh, you're waiting because you have to wait for the colony ship to finish first. Um, 
Actually, we kind of do need a power plant. So I'm going to move you. And food is fine for now. Oh, the Orions have just made us a rival. Transport hub. Mass transit port. Mining network. Industrial lab. Engineering lab. Let's go with gauge gouge mining. Well, we have our colony ship. Do we go for Sirius or... Oh, the Tamarian already got that planet that I was looking at. Oh, well. Um, I could go for Tanibia, to be fair, too. And Sirius is already within our borders, so... Tanibia Prime it is. Yeah, now you have no orders because you cannot even get there. It's really annoying. Teachings of Explorers. USS Franklin's crews reporting that they found something spectacular on Alpha Centauri 8. On the surface lies traces of an explorative expedition of another civilization. Left behind are some well-preserved documents and artifacts. The proposed action by science officer Shan Shu is to send the text findings to our homeworld for translation. There is also the possibility to sell them off to a private investor. Um, send it to our homeworld for research. Spatial rift detected. Research complete. Station complete. Um, wow, they were taking so much trade attractiveness. Hmm. Ferengi rule of acquisition. Yeah, let's do it. So, hang, actually, hang on. I just find it, yeah. Wow, that's a lot of uh, difference, actually. Unity, yeah, the Orions are now a rival. Might as well rival them back. Ah, the ancient mining drones. Okay, um. Yeah, there's a lot of vex, um. colonization going on around us now. As M tropical colonization in progress. The Bolian League. Spatial rift detected. Okay, we can learn much from each other's. There they are, the Bolian League. Joint the Grand Axis. Well, we are not the Grand Axis. For several weeks now, United Earth Security has been attempting to trace a series of illegal database hacks. The intrusions seem to have one thing in common. They all have targeted at locations known to store classified historical information on the eugenic wars of the late 20th centuries. Where genetically augmented humans nearly claim total domination over the Earth. Why someone would want to dig up the ghosts of the past remains unknown. That is indeed unknown. You know, I'd like to get the benzene nitrate. Basically saving up for another colony ship at this moment. Maybe Virgin is 70. I mean, I still have, like, two more systems I can colonize after the current one. Let's go to... F what did we find over here? Oh, we finally found them. Holy crap. Took them long enough. Um, yes, that's a cheap one. I'll take that. Wow, that re that stored engineering research is just boosting our engineering sufficiently. Augmented realities. The research station orbiting Alpha Centauri 6 has gone silent, missing several scheduled check-ins. Unknown to the public, this station is one of two across United Earth space still carrying frozen embryos of genetically augmented humans. These remnants from the eugenic wars have been kept hidden for over a century. 
Though now it appears that secrecy has been undone. So we now need to go here. Um, how long do we have for it? A year. I'd actually like you to research that first. Um, you should be enough to destroy that actually though. But I need the Enterprise going... Oh, hello. We've kept on... Spiritual Unity, Growth Speed. Education, Propaganda. Could upgrade our building here, or this one. For 90, it goes to double strength. This one, for 120, gets two extra though. I'll just go with infrastructure projects. Because then the upgrade is that much cheaper, as is this one. Oh! There are some impact craters, probably, from the Zindi attack. Not 100% sure if that is what triggered it. Engineering research. Let's get the minefield. It's cheap. Oh, mirror, mirror. Do we get simultaneous events from Season 4? Wow. Captain Maria Galvani and the OA team beam down to the USS Ibn Battuta to explore the planet. Interesting mineral compositions seem to warrant further study. Uh, oh, down from the USS Ibn Battuta, by the way. Interesting mineral compositions seem to warrant further study. However, the approaching Iron Storm forces the OA team to return to the ship before the geological analysis can be completed. With a rapidly increasing interference, the transporter chief very nearly loses the away team's transporter patterns, but is fortunately able to beam Captain Mariana, Maria Galvani, Mariana, really, Maria Galvani and the away team up to the USS Ibn Battuta safely. Following their return, the captain and the members of the away team appear to be acting strangely, becoming angry and indeed violent towards other crew members with little provocation. The executive officer has become concerned that there may be something wrong with the away team and believes that they should be examined by the ship's doctor, justifying the away team's actions as a result of extensive time spent in deep space. I will force them to go to mid med bay. The ship's doctor has run a complete medical examination of the captain and the away team. As far as the doctor can tell, there's nothing wrong with any of them and no explanation can be provided to explain their violent behavior. The executive officer has the captain and the away team confined to the break until they can determine the cause of their change in behavior and how it can be resolved. Captain Maria Galvani eventually confides in the executive officer that they are not from this universe and they have transposed places with their opposites here. The captain had ordered the away team to keep up the pretense until they could determine a way to return to their own universe. But the differences between the two universes made that impossible. Transporter chief believes that there may be a way to return the away team to their own universe and hopefully recover their own captain and away team in the process. However, there is a chance that the approach may fail and they would end up losing both away teams. They must be saved. The captain... And the away team from the parallel universe are escorted by a security team to the transporter room, where the transporter chief attempts to repeat the process that brought them to this universe and sent their own captain and the away team to the other. Before dematerializing, the captain from the other universe tells the first officer from this universe that this universe is weak and ripe for conquest, and that they will crumble as all weak civilizations do. There's a problem with the transporter, and it shorts out during the transport cycle. The transporter chief tries to recover the signal, but it's now gone forever. It's likely that both versions of Captain Maria Govani and the away team members were lost during transport. The distraught transporter chief promises to fix the error that led to this incident taking place, but won't bring back the captain or lost crew members. We lost a science officer. Let's um get Roxanne Gibson. We already finished there anyway. Um, you should soon be able to go there. But for now, we might as well take Z-Bootis. Z-Bootis. 
Having routed the research station orbiting Alpha Centauri 6, it is quickly apparent that all is not well on the station. Several hull breaches are detected and a number of bodies float dead alongside the station. As the security team prepares to board the station, proximity alerts trigger. Vessels of an alien design swarm for their position on the far side of the station, weapons engaged. Okay, that guy is having an issue. Augment stolen fleet. You know, you really should be careful when playing with high Go away, Q. Station complete. Um, we finished some things. Phaser turrets. Let's just get the research speed. Let's get the tactical var variants. The enemy fleet which attacked the research station orbiting Alpha Centauri 6 has been destroyed. Attempts to recover survivors have provided a number of potential candidates in the wreckage, which must now be investigated. Um. Okay, you can return to Seoul. Oh, the Vulcans are actually helping me out with the uh, pirate station here. It's taking damage, but slowly. Station complete. We have our extra research, as well as uh, the Brazine Nitrate. Phi aliens. I might as well check them out. The debris contains a number of computer cores relatively unscathed from the destruction of the enemy fleet. Engineering teams were able to quickly piece together that the fleet was being commanded by a group calling themselves the Khanid, an apparent reference to Khan Noonien Singh of the late 20th century's Great Khanid. The group of genetically engineering hum engineered human augments was seeking to acquire more embryos preserved from the eugenic war to bolster their numbers before striking out to claim a world of their own. The destruction of their stolen alien fleet seems to have ended these ambitions. Minerals and other things. <clears throat> Beta Valdona, okay, that's interesting. Project the Garidian Republic, as well as the Romulan Star Empire. Our interstellar alliance has caught the public imagination. No longer is Earth an isolated backwater on the galactic stage, but a central component in a powerful block of shared values and interests. This coalition of planets protects us, but there are many who wish for further integration to better secure ourselves against hostile neighbors. Politicians on all four worlds have signaled desire to start this process. All that is needed is for one leader to step forth and make the proposal. Unity is in Earth's interests. It truly is. The thing is going down really slowly. The Vulcan High Command is favored in, has voted in favor of forming the Federation. The Andorian Empire has voted in favor of forming the Federation. The Tellarides are taking their time. The dele delegation have all assembled in the Grand Chamber on Earth. Billions of people from each of the Coalition homeworlds watch from their homes or on enormous public displays. Federation Day. Prime Minister Nathan Samuel steps forward, allied counterparts in tow. Dozens of lights from the audience flash and the roar of the crowd subsides until the entire hall is blanketed in silence. The leaders gather around a large book on the central podium and in Turk mark their names. Today is an historic day, Prime Minister Nathan Samuel says to the gathered masses. Today is the day our many races are joined together in peace and in the spirit of exploration and progress, today marks the birth of a federation, the United Federation of Planets. And with that, the applause thundered. 
The other Federation Throne is now a special class of member world, Vassal, under your nation, which will aid your fleet in times of war. The Federation Council mechanic has now been unlocked. Once every two years, the Federation Council will allow players to integrate new members, reach out to neighbors diplomatically, or engage in research specialization focuses. So you finally did it. You put your ridiculously inconsequential differences aside and formed a Federation with your neighbors. Kudos to you. But don't forget that a federation is for life, not just for the Lolu Nod. You'll notice your influence income has fallen. You don't have to be omniscient like me to realize this is a consequence of the difficulties inherent in forming a new galactic state. Station complete. Understood. So we have um, too many direct controlled systems right now. So this is the Vulcan sector. I could actually give them stuff. Apparently our um, the Endoria sector, we got some of the uh, other p systems as well, which is nice of them. Oh wow, we don't even have Tenebia yet, and we have too many. Now yeah, we're going to have to make sectors at this rate. Federation member worlds. Um... Ah, yes, we also have some of those stations, of course. I think I'm going to make a... S over here, a sector. United Federation of Planets, the Endoria sector. Yeah, our borders are just not that big yet. I don't think that needs to be fixed. Well, in essence, it needs to be fixed, but... Create a new sector. Uh, it's calling it the Thonalon sector, but let's um, rename that real quickly. The Andorian sector. Okay. Oh, hang on. Is it not called the Andorian sector sector? Fine, the Andorian sector. Um, so for now, we're good. Hopefully, we get some tech and other things going. Anyway, I would like to thank you all for watching. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date in the future. I'll see you guys later.